Today we're going to talk about chef knives and what you'll be using in your own home. I brought a small collection of knives here, so if you come over here, I'll show them to you. So as you can see here, I brought out a small collection of knives for you to look at. Here we have some meat cleavers, good for a lot of blunt action, not really a sharp knife. We have the sandukus, we have some ceramic knives, some meat cutting knives, which a scimitar used for cutting large primals of meat, or just large chunks, more for the big game hunters. Filet knives, you got a flexible filet knife, best for fish, and then you got a firm filet knife, one that doesn't bend, used for beef, pork, and other meats. Bread knife, easiest way to cut bread, no doubt about that. Carving knife, great for the holidays. Some set of Asian knives, which we'll go more over when we talk about sushi. Paring knife, which is a necessary one to have in the kitchen for the small work. A tournée knife, or bird's beak. This is used for a specific kind of cut. You don't have to worry about that in the home. Steak knives is a necessary must, especially if you're a meat eater. Utility knives, which is the nice in-between be from the paring knife to the chef knife. And then you have the chef knife, by far the workhorse of the kitchen. So the first thing we're going to look at when buying a knife would be the metal, the blade itself. Most of them come in stainless steel, like this one here, usually the straight blade, otherwise they can come as serrated and gratin edge, which is just tiny little divots along the blade, so that way it helps food not stick. Serrated like this just helps cutting bread or try to make its edge last longer, but what ends up happening is you can't sharpen it yourself. Carbon steel, which can discolor over time if you don't properly take care of it yourself. You just rub a little bit of mineral oil on it to help it not change in colors. As you can see here, this one has a wood grain edge, if you can see it at all. More of just a decoration. And then now the new thing, ceramic. Ceramic can actually be sharper than the metal knives, but they become more fragile. If I took this and smashed it right on the edge of the counter, shattered it in a million pieces, and it'd be useless. And you also cannot sharpen this yourself. You have to send it to a manufacturer. So now let's look at the handle. Right here you have the classical wood handle. Problem with this is it can have bacteria grow in it and eventually will warp and come off of the blade. You got the metal handle, nice and shiny, doesn't have much for grip. Plastic handles, which is used in commercial kitchens, which are cheap and inexpensive and can take a beating. You have the more classical, more modern, three rivet handle, very durable. And then you got the new fancier models, which is a lot like the three rivet. Me, myself, I tend to go for the three rivets. Classic and durable. Alright, now I'm going to show you how to keep that edge on your knife. This is a steel. Now, it's highly recommended to have one of these on hand at all times. What it does is it does not sharpen your knife. Remember that. It only helps to keep it sharp. Now, before you use your knife, it helps to give it a few swipes. The safest way, put this on the table. You can put a towel underneath to prevent it from slipping. Take your knife, put it at a shallow angle, and run it down on each side three, four times, and it'll help between tasks to keep this edge sharp. All right, now we're gonna show you how to sharpen it. First off, I prefer the whetstone. I got one in here, soaking in some soapy water. Just let it soak for about 10, 20 minutes. Some of them come with a little rubber holder, otherwise you can use a kitchen towel. Go ahead, pick it out. This, this one has two grinds, a coarse edge and a smooth edge. You want to do the coarse one first. Get that out of the way. So you got to remember to do this at a shallow degree angle. And you'll start at one corner near the heel here, and you'll run all the way across to the edge of the blade. Then you do the other side, same way. And you do that three, four times until you can actually feel that starting to get a little sharper. Then you go ahead, you'll flip this over, and you do the same thing. Run it a couple times on the smaller grind, 
and it'll round off that edge. Then go ahead, take a towel, wipe your blade, and you'll be good to go. Okay, so you don't want to try the whetstone, a little too labor intensive. That's fine. They make these nowadays, which is pretty easy because the sanduku is supposed to be ground down at a shallower edge. So we have one for the standard knife, and then we got one for the sanduku. Go ahead and run it through here, sharpen the knife for you, won't have to worry a problem about it. Okay, so you're thinking about using those electric sharpeners. I recommend staying away from that. What happens is it grinds too much metal off the knife, and you're losing more of your blade every time you sharpen it. So just stay away from it.